Welcome to Gregory's Physics Class, video number one. Hey, if you want to download this workbook, Gregory XL Lessons 1 to 4, it says Gregory XL Lessons 1 to 4, click on the link below the video. Hey, in this first video, we're going to see how to plot an XY scatter chart, just like this. And we have our data, and we will see how to plot it. Put the proper labels, title, and adjust uh, any other details. Now, the most important thing about an XY scatter chart is we have two variables. We have an X and a Y. Now, in this case, we have two scatter plots. So there's actually two Ys, but we have one X. And the great thing about the charting engine in Excel, as long as you have your Xs set up to the left, and then Y1, Y2 to the right, it'll automatically plot it correctly. Now, XY scatter, the big mistake people make, even my dad is a PhD physicist. He phones me up one day and he says, I'm not, I can't get my line chart to work. Let's go look up here. If you go to insert line, forget it. That's not what we want when we want scatter. And why? Because this scatter plot shows the relationship between new two numbers. Here's our X. Here's our Y1. It means there's two numbers. You're going uh, out or backwards on the x axis and then up or down. So to plot a point, you have to move on the x and then on the y. There are two numbers. When you do line, it's a single number with a static category. All right? So we're always going to use scatter because we're plotting the relationship between two numbers. Let's go over to we're starting on the answer sheet. And when you download this workbook, there's a sheet for you to try the exercise yourself. And then there's always the answer there. All right, so the first thing is x's are in the first column, y's are in subsequent columns. Ah, another important thing about plotting is you want to very carefully label the column. Uh, these are called field names or column headers variable names also. That means what's in this column? Angle. What's in this column? Range. What's in this column? Height. And then you have your x, y, y. All right, now we can highlight this. And notice I can click and drag with my cursor. But for large data sets, there's a keyboard shortcut to highlight the current table. But when you set up your data, you definitely want to have blanks all the way around. Not only does that help with charting, but if you were ever to sort this, you would never want to like put a note to the side here, right? that's touching the data set. Because as soon as you try to make a chart or sort or do some of the other amazing things Excel can do, it will not do it correctly. So blanks all the way around. Then watch this. You can simply control, and I'm going to use asterisks on the number pad. If you don't have the number pad, then you have to use control shift 8. But boom, control asterisks highlights the whole current table. Now, we're never going to use line because we have two numbers. We're plotting the relationship between two numbers. We're going to come over to scatter. There are scatter with markers only, and there are lines. The lines, which we'll see in just a mo in next video, that's for theoretical plots. That's when we actually have a function and we're plotting the values. When it's actual raw data, these are raw data from an experiment. You definitely want to see the actual points not connected by line. So I'm going to select this one. Boom, just like that. I mean, that's amazing. We didn't have to do hardly anything except for set up our data smartly. All right, so it has the two plots. When, you, when the charting engine pops this out, we still got to fix it a little bit. We want to change the uh, height, the maximum value on the vertical axis. We want to add some labels, etc. Now, the first thing I want you to notice, let's actually make this a little bit smaller. I'm going to point to the edge and then click and drag in. First thing we can notice, we have range and height. I want to actually move this over to here, because these are the labels for our vertical axis. Now, charts, there's some the, what's called the series data, lines, background, legend, axis. Notice each time I click on a certain element, it's highlighted. Once you s select a certain element, you can format it. So here, I'm going to click on the legend. And now I want to format it. Right click, format. Now, if you're over on this axis and you right click, notice it doesn't say format legend, it says format axis. So you always want to look for format, whatever the thing is. All right, there's also a keyboard shortcut, it is control one. 
either way. Now, I want to say on the left, this, these are the uh, format legend options. I'm going to say on the left, and then click Close. An amazing thing about Excel is that with formulas or charts or other features, if you change the, the uh, inputs, these are called chart inputs, they will update here. And I would like on this axis not only to have the, the category name or the variable name, I want the unit. So I'm going to come right up here to the cell, and I'm going to uh, put it in edit mode, type a space, uh, parentheses M for meter, and then tab, notice, instantly updates. That's true with the data, with the uh, raw data also. So I'm going to put meter here. Pretty cool. All right. Um, we have, in essence, our uh, vertical labels here. I want to add some horizontal labels. Now, we'll change the formatting. Maybe we have to change the font size on this later. But right now, notice what happened to my ribbons up here? If I'm clicking anywhere in the spreadsheet, I don't see my chart tools. But as soon as I click on the chart, these are called context sensitive menus. Now, design, layout, format. I want to go to layout because that's where you add labels. I want axis titles. We already have our vertical. I want my horizontal. Now, when I click on this title below axis, it expects us to type the words here. But I don't really want to type the words. I want to link this label just like the legend is linked. I want to link this to the cell. The way you do that is you highlight the label. Now, you got to be careful. Right there, I highlighted the label, and I have my dashes. That means on the, on the outside edge. That means I can highlight the words and type. If you want to link this to a cell, you have to click on the outside edge and make sure that it's got a solid line. Then I'm going to come up here to the formula bar and click. I have to type an equal sign, and then I click on the cell with the chart input. It puts in sheet reference. That means the name of the sheet and A3. Once I hit Enter, boom. Now, same thing, just like with our legend, these labels are connected. So now I can come over here, and if I change this, like uh, degrees, because you definitely want to have the, the name of the thing here and the units. All right. Now, let's do a chart title. And I already typed a chart title in the cell. You can easily type it into your chart if you want, but I like to put everything into the cells. That's way it's that, that way it's easy to change. I don't see my context sensitive ribbon, so I'm going to click back on the chart. I'm going to go to Layout, Chart Title, and how about Above? I'm going to do the same thing. Now, last time we clicked here and then typed in, in equal sign. If you hit F2, it jumps the cursor up here. And then you type in equal sign. And I'm going to click on F1, Enter. Now, this is terrible. Look at how big that is. I'm going to right click it. And we talked about format. But if you go down to Format, it doesn't allow us to change the font size. So I'm going to come right here. This is called the Mini Toolbar. And I'm going to click on it and maybe change it to 10, Enter. I'm going to click on this, right click, go up to the Mini Toolbar. And I see it's already at 10. I'm going to try 8. I'm going to click here, right click. Right click, oh, it's right there, and then change it to 8. So that time it, it appeared below. Next thing we want to do is we want to change the max and min on this. I think we'll leave the min the same, but we want to change the max. Remember, right click, format, or you can use the keyboard shortcut, Control 1. Up here for access options, you have minimum and maximum. I'm going to not use auto, let's use fixed and change it to 1. I hit Enter there. All right, now we can expand our size here. And uh, I'm zooming this down here, right, to make the, the actual spreadsheet bigger and smaller. The keyboard shortcut for that is, or the mouse keyboard shortcut is ho to hold Control and roll the wheel. And that changes the, uh, the view size, not the print size. All right. All right, actually, we're going to, I'm going to hold Control and roll out a little bit. I want to move this chart. I'm, to move a chart, you have to point to the edge, and that's called the Move Cursor. That's the same Move Cursor in Word and PowerPoint and others. I'll move it over here, just like off to the side. I can also change the width of it. I can point to the edge, and when I see that horizontal arrow, I can click and drag. 
So what we have here is we have a visual portrayal of our data set. We can clearly see the pattern here and also a pattern here. So that's how to do an XY scatter, how to set up the data and make your chart with labels. In our next video, when we come back, number two, we'll see how to do something similar, but we'll have, we'll have to create a formula in the spreadsheet to create the uh, theoretical line, and then we'll plot it. All right, see you next video.